All right, you guys had a ton of interest in my new broad fork on Instagram that my father-in-law made me with his amazing welding skills. So I thought I would just make a video here with all of the details. And if you watch till the end, I'll put up a screen um, summary of all of the measurements so that if you want to just screenshot it to save it for later, you can. But here's a little overview of the general idea of what it looks like. And I even brought my tape measure out here with me to get exact widths of each little thing for you guys. So here we go. Starting with the base of it, the base was 27 inches wide and the two handles, which are going out slightly, were 57 inches, 59 inch total for that piping though. The stakes or the tines that go into the ground are just some old rebar. Most of them are three quarter inch. The two on the outsides were half inch. I'm assuming that's just because that's what he had. He uses a lot of reclaimed or scrounged metal for his projects. So that works for me. So for the base, the square tubing he used is two inches and that holds both the handle and the tines together. The handle piping is one inches, and then the rebar themselves are 12 inches in total, but only 10 inches are sticking out of that square tubing. He also did grind down the points of the rebar just to make it go into the ground a little bit easier. And then I think the best detail about this is that he actually drilled holes through this tubing for both the handle and the tines. So that way they're a little bit, well, a lot of bit stronger. So you can kind of see where he attached them there. But now let's do the true test and see how it works. So I'm actually gonna go over to the new garden and I'm not gonna really go in depth about why you would wanna use a broad fork or the purpose of no-till gardening, but the soil in the main garden is already pretty loose. Where I really wanted this tool was for out in the crop garden. The soil out here is incredibly compact. When we first moved in, we could barely get a shovel in it to plant fruit trees. Um, and that's just due to being commercially farmed for many, many decades, being overly tilled, and also just having semis regularly driving on it for harvest time. So as you can see, it's not sinking in quite as easily over here, even though the soil is really wet right now, which makes it looser. But I am able to get it completely in, which is super exciting. And this is going to be an awesome tool to just loosen the soil um, a little bit without completely changing the soil structure, which is very exciting. And I am so thankful that he made this for me because I think it's gonna be a game changer. And I have some potatoes that need to get planted out here soon. So I gotta start prepping. So I knew this tool was gonna be a bit of a workout, which it definitely is, but it just amazes me how compact it is out here. When I rock it back, it comes up in one big mass still versus in the main garden, it was kind of hard to tell because of the mulch. As soon as I rocked it backwards, it kind of all broke apart. Whereas it takes maybe two rounds um, of doing it in the same spot over here to get it really nice and loose. But overall, 
it seems super, super sturdy. I'm not afraid that those tines are gonna break off anytime soon. He did a great job making it nice and strong. So if you have a welder in your family or a friend and you want them to make you one, um, I definitely recommend it. I will say the other thing that I love about this that he did and I didn't ask him to do this was he painted it what I would call can't lose it in the yard red which is definitely necessary on a farm with lots of children because it's very easy to, lo to lose tools especially tools like this that you know are probably going to get played with so keep that in mind if you decide to make one make it a bright color so that you don't lose it because it's just black or gray piping. All right, hopefully that answered all of your guys' questions. Here are some other broad forks from popular sources and just kind of an idea of what they go for. If it is in your budget to buy one, go for it. Otherwise, you can definitely build one for much, much cheaper. And um, here's a summary of all of those measurements. So if you need to send this to somebody or if you want to try to make your own, hopefully that gives you kind of some guidelines to go for. I think that's it, though. If there's any other questions, let me know in the comments, and I'll talk to you guys later.